What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And you guys see the thumbnail. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. And I don't want to be clear and, and upfront about a few things, right? Uh, I'm not generally into the TMZ type stuff, right? Shout out TMZ. It's just not really my lane of content. You know, I'll cover uh, some of the rappers or some of that stuff every once in a while, uh, but not very often, you know? And and I hesitated to make this video. Uh, I almost made a different video. I almost did a kind of pull everybody's cover type video. And in the process of doing that, I went back and I watched a lot of old clips, right, of, of different things that people have said. And I'm going to reference some of that in here, but but really I want to try to elevate the conversation. I, I've heard some of the videos that have come out and, and I hear kind of different narratives. And so I wanted to address those. And again, I'm, I want to try to elevate the conversation if we can, right? Maybe think about some different stuff. Uh, on the flip side, I'm going to say some shit that's going to piss some people off. Right. Uh, but it's the truth. Right. And and I feel like it needs to be said. Uh, so so it is what it is. Um, like I said, there's a lot to cover. Right. So first off, Adam 22, no jumper. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing this narrative coming out of Adam 22 is kind of setting this stuff up. He's he's pitting north against south. He's he's baiting people with questions and, and this and that. Now, I'm not a fan of no jumper. I'm definitely not a fan of Adam 22. I, uh, heard some stuff about him, the same stuff that everybody else has. I don't know what's true and what's not, but it's not a good look. And uh, and and so there's that, right? I'm not a supporter. I'm not defending the dude. But I, I heard what Lazy said uh, the other day, right? In the same video suit where he was threatening to mow down a female and calling her the N-word, even though he said he doesn't use the N-word. Um, that stuff's not really what's going viral. What's going viral is what he said would go viral, which was talking about Lazy Boy, right? And, and said, stop talking about me. And so I went back and I looked at the No Jumper interview with Lazy Boy. Uh, and I watched it, you know, during the premiere. I, I watched, you know, the part that I had missed after. Um, but I went back and double checked. And Adam asked uh, Lazy Boy, hey, you know, uh, you know, are, are you kind of impressed with, with somebody like Lefty Gunplay's kind of come up in, in the industry? And he's like, yeah, man, like, I'm, you know, it's hard for, basically what he said was it's, it's hard for, you know, Mexican rappers from California in particular to make it. And so, you know, props to, to anybody, right? It's a challenge. And then he says, hey, well, you know, he said he won't do a, a, you know, music with the North. And of course, Lacey Boy's like, I wouldn't do music with him either. Right? The, the feeling's mutual. He didn't talk crazy about him. He didn't talk down on him. Um, you know, he had said uh, when, you know, when uh, uh, Adam was like, hey, you know, do you follow these other Mexican rappers, you know, these dudes from Southern California, even though you wouldn't necessarily listen to a South Side of rapper, like right around bumping and stuff, do you kind of, you know, watch for them and, and see what they're up to? And Lazy Boy said, yeah, well, I watch your show, right? I watch your show, so I see it. And and knowing I was going to come on here, I, I went back and, and watched even more. So obviously Lazy Boy had heard the stuff that, that Lefty, you know, has said over time, right? Of, F the Norte and this and that, very aggressive things. Um, and and he chose not to respond. He didn't take, you know, he didn't take the bait, but it's not really the bait of Adam 22, it's the bait of Lefty. That's the bait, right? Uh, so so I don't think the responsibility is on No Jumper, you know? Uh, are they above, you know, instigating stuff and stirring up beef between people and all this other stuff? Of course not. It's like the Jerry Springer for gang influence people have the time. Um, but in this case, I think that focus is a distraction because it's taking away attention from where I think it belongs, which is other podcasts, other conversations, right? Uh, you know, you got folks like the haters world. I don't know much about the guy. I'm not here to talk bad about him. Uh, you know, he, he has his role and, and, and that's fine. Right. And, and he's from the South and that's fine. Right. Like be proud of where you're from. So I don't know the dude, but the instigating. The creating issues where there are no issues, that is a problem. And that's not happening in No Jumper, right? That's happening on Haters World. That's happening with American Cholo. That's happening with Bozo. That's happening with Lefty. So uh, this is, I think we have to call for what it is, right? Um, speaking of Bozo, this dude. Bozo's like the gunner of Southern California, right? Like he just makes up entirely fictitious stuff, you know, and, and I get it. He, he goes around and does it when, when he wants to sell music. Um, 
the dude's already older, right? And and let's just be real. He, and, and this is not just to all talk bad about the dude. I'm just stating facts. Uh, but, but it ties into another point I want to make, which I'll get to in a second. But, you know, he went on Camp Capone, and I think he said it other places too, and, and talks about how he was 10 days to the house, and he blasted this dude, right? He blasted this northerner. And uh, and and almost kind of got in trouble when he went to the hole because they're like, hey, fool, why are you tripping? And but he's just so down and and such a a mas chingon dude. So that's a lie, right? It's a lie. Uh, I'm not saying it's a lie because I was there, but I'm saying it's a lie because I've done a whole lot of time in prison. Granted, I've never been on level ones and level twos, you know. So I I guess it could be radically different over there. But the if you haven't seen it, the gist of his story is. I'm 10 days to the house, and I'm at work in the kitchen. Well, there's a first flaw because there's S time, right? So in prison, when you have a work assignment, you stop going to your work assignment like a couple days before your release, right? When, you know, when you're in the general population. Um, I pro from the suit, so I hadn't had a work assignment in years. But uh, for those fortunate enough to hang out on the yard, you wouldn't be going to work 10 days to the house. And then he says, man, uh, uh, a couple days prior, some northerners had jumped on a on a south side, beat them up, right? And so we were on lockdown. If you're on lockdown for a north-south conflict, north and south is not going to be working together in the kitchen, right? Also, again, and, and you guys can let me know in the comments if you've been on level ones and level twos, but uh, on level threes and fours, I can tell you this, the northerners are not going to go jump some south sider, right? Just like the south siders would not go jump some northerner um that that those that's warfare right and and that's a little bit more pre-planned and it just doesn't that doesn't really make sense but let's say on a fluke it happens if you're locked down you're not gonna be working in the kitchen together you know and so then he raises his hand for this northerner that's working in the kitchen with the southsiders and goes and gets a kitchen knife and and blasts this dude and he's 10 days to the house and he gets you know like an extra 14 months when he says he gets an extra 14 months, what he's referencing is like, uh, if you catch a sticking in prison, right, uh, it's a write-up, and you'll lose some good time, you know. 10 days to the house, come on now. Catching a sticking, I don't care what era it was in, uh, you blast somebody with a kitchen knife, you're going to get a DA referral. You're going to go back to court, and you are going to get a hell of a lot more than 14 months when you do go back to court, you're picking up a new case. But all this happened supposedly when he's like 19. But then he said that he was like 19 when he caught his case and was arrested for multiple attempted hot ones and robberies. And then he pled out to two robberies, but got 35 alive, which is ridiculous. But then they fixed it to 18 years, then 16 and a half on 18. But then he had 10. And, and so the dude just lies. Right? That's what I said. He's, he, you know, he just comes on it and just says stuff that is not true, right? And and it's not the first time, and I'm sure there's other instances if I went back and actually listened to everything that he said on all his little interviews, but you don't need to hear much, right? So he, Bozo, right, it, it's not his lyrics. You know, it, there are Northerners who, yes, talk bad about South and Southsiders and everything else in their music, just like they're Southerners who talk bad about the North and Northerners in their music. And that makes sense because gang members or people that pretend to be gang members are going to talk about rival gangs in their music sometimes, right? So that's going to happen. These aren't lyrics to a song. These are podcasts. These are going out and intentionally saying stuff to try to promote yourself to your own people. But you got to remember there's other people that identify like that that are hearing you. And they're going to feel some type of way. Right. Nonetheless, you don't see a bunch of northerners reacting, responding, going on podcasts, saying all this other stuff. Right. So but this dude's old already. Right. And and he goes on American Cholo and and American Cholo, you know, he's a trip, too. Right. Uh, he. You know, his story, I, I went back and listened to his first interview. Right. That he did with uh, with Street TV or whatever it's called. Right. The dude, uh, Alonzo or Alfonso. And he's like, hey, man, you know, I grew up in a neighborhood, rough environment, and, and I'm not taking nothing from him. I'm going to take him at his word. Like I said, I'm using people's own words here. So I'm going to take him at his word, right? 
and, and caught a case and shot at the cops, a bunch of rivals, and, you know, got eight and a half years back in, like, 90, 91, went to YA for a couple of years, got out, caught a violation, got out, you know, went house raided with his mom, a dope case, he wound up getting busted with a pistol, some bullets, went and did a few years, came out, and he's, like, 24, right? Um, so a couple trips, you know, a few trips to YA, you know, he said he did more time on violations than he did on, on new cases, but then he says, man, I get out, I'm, I'm 24, so he's pretty much aged out of, of the YA system almost, and his homeboys pull up, and he's like, nah, fool, keep it pushing, because he had a family, right, he, his, his baby's mom was catching a case or whatever, I don't know the details, but the point is, he stepped up to his responsibilities. He went and started digging ditches with the Faisas. And obviously, you know, that was a long time ago, right? Like he's right around my age. I'm 47. I think he might be even a, a little bit older, right? Um, but but nonetheless, uh, so, you know, figures like around 50. So he started doing that 25 years ago, right? And has grown and 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 has a house and and you know, obviously has built a good life for himself, right? Never caught any more cases, you know, and and really prioritized being a grown man. Got out of that juvenile mindset of gangbanging. And I celebrate that. I applaud that. You know, I'm, I'm not saying any of this to put the dude down. Um, that That's a great look, right? And when he first came on YouTube, when, when I first started YouTube, he was already, had been on for a while, but I hadn't really ever watched his stuff. And then I heard a bunch of channels, you know, from up north, to be quite honest, talking all kinds of crazy stuff about him. And I didn't really know the dude's scoop. I didn't pay too much attention. Uh, and, and you know, time goes on. But so I've gone and I've looked at some of his old stuff. And his message was a great message, was a positive message, right? And, and it's not just an old message. He was talking like this just a couple months ago too, right? Just last year of, hey, do we got to let this gangbang shit go, right? And, and it's not helpful for our communities, right? And... And yeah, bro, I'd, I'd have a, a, a Northern on my platform. I interviewed, you know, Northerners in the past. And and ain't no Northern ever killed my homeboy. So if I'm going to use the logic of they're the rivals, then how could I even have Southsiders from down South from certain neighborhoods come on my show? Because those were rivals too. And and a very elevated mindset, right, that that, that he has shown in the past. Um and for some reason, that's kind of gone away. And, and I don't know if it's because his his channel and his platform didn't quite get the support that he wanted from, you know, from Southern California in particular or beyond. I don't know. I, I don't pretend to kind of, you know, be in the dude's head, right? But but this shift to now, uh, you know, having folks like Bozo on there and, and, and now he's talking like he's a Southside channel, right? Us, our channels, us homies, you know, a very different narrative and it it's not helpful right now he don't owe nothing to anybody he don't owe nothing to the north i'm just saying it's unfortunate that all this chitter chatter right and i think the rise of channels like haters world and and this kind of stuff has led him to see oh maybe that's the route maybe that's the path you know um and and he's kind of i don't know man maybe sort of lost his way or at least lost the way that he started out having and it makes sense why him and Gold Toes were getting along. I don't know what their status is now. It's, you know, I don't know. But when him and Gold Toes were talking on, on their channel multiple times, right? Um, it was a great conversation because same thing with Gold Toes. He's like, look, man, I've seen the power of music. I've seen how songs can inspire people to do harm, right? To 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 act a fool. And and I just don't want to be a part of that energy. That's not what I want to put out there. Right. I'm I'm trying to build. I want to see Rasa in particular be successful regardless of where you're from. You know, so so yes, I, I do this video on Southern California and it's a Southern California car club and it's Baldacci and, and other Southsiders there. It's it's all put together by, you know, uh, uh somebody with a history as a Southsider, you know, and written by that person. Like so and everybody's winning in this. Folks are getting paid, things are getting lined up, right? Gotos is moving forward with movies. Um, you know, he he's talking to Cholo, American Cholo sitting there like, hey, you know, Simo Media, 
which is under GT Distribution, based obviously in Northern California. Gold Tools had even said, I mean, uh, Gil from American Cholo had even said, hey, that's where I got the idea of putting in the microphone so that when I have rappers that come on American Cholo, I'm like, hey, fool, if you're a rapper, you got to be able to spit right here, right? And he was inspired by that, by watching Simo Media. And people are going to hear that, or, or maybe at the time they heard it, I don't know. And, oh, see, that's just proof the South is is getting its game from the North or whatever. I don't think that's the case. And and I'm not saying that, right? Um, I'm just showing the potential for growth, right? I'm sure that people who are a fan of American Cholo like watching rappers that they know or even rappers that they don't know go on the platform and spit a little freestyle, right? Or, or re, you know, rehearse verse or whatever it may be, you know? I'm sure that adds something to the element, right? Bozo goes on there to promote an album, right? And and says his little stuff. So it's it's good, right? And and get game from wherever you can get game from. Like it makes sense. It Gold Toes Haters World goes on this whole hype of Gold Toes and taking over Northern California City. Look, respects to Gold Toes as a businessman. That dude ain't been a gang member in fucking decades, right? And, and again, I'm not saying that to put him down, just like I didn't say what I said about Toto, put him down, right? It's it it's a good look. We got to stop looking at these 40-year-old and 50-year-old men and trying to hold them to some fucking teenage standard of being out on the block and are you a real one and all this other shit. When half the clowns running around pushing this real one narrative, like Bozo, like Lefty, they ain't never been real ones by their own yardstick, by their own measurement. Like, it, because if you are, you don't have to come make up stories, right? Lefty ain't done no damn nine years in Pelican Bay. He ain't done nine years locked up anywhere, right? It's not consecutive. And we know that because we know it's criminal history. It's all public. So from 2013 to 2023, that's 10 years, he caught hella cases. Gun cases, uh, misdemeanor warrant of scounding cases, drug case, burglary, van or robbery, I think, uh, vandalism. He didn't catch a shooting case until May of last year. That's probably what he's got the ankle monitor for. So that old narrative, well, I just got out, I did all this time. Anybody that's done time knows it's not true. I've probably done more time consecutively in prison around more of the South's big homies than Bozo and Lefty combined, right? Just from being validated in the suit and being around these dudes for years, all my neighbors, right? I've, I've told the story before. In the section that I was in, in the Bay, there was only one other cell. That was a northern cell. He was single cell. Every other cell was a south sider cell. And I would say two people in there were not clicked up. Everybody else was, right? Household name type clicked up folks from down south. So I've been around these dudes. We that's My first care package when I came to the Bay. Uh, was from a dude, a big-ass black hand right here, right? Danny Pena from, from Hazard, right? So, it's anybody that's been around these cats and has really done time can see when characters are being characters, right? Just like anybody that's done time knows that fuck a big mister ain't shit. He hides behind the red pano to cover up his own little cowardice acts and the whole red on red so that he doesn't get held accountable, right? And, and so, and I've said that on here before too. So, this is not me picking... Uh, north versus South. Yeah, I'm from the North and I'm proud of that. But I'm not set tripping in this. I, I don't set trip. I don't gangbang. I don't have issues. I move freely in Northern California. I move freely in Southern California. I don't ever look over my shoulder. I've never been given a reason to. That's not going to change now. And not because I'm a tough guy, but just because I move with respect. I know how to navigate and, and it is what it is, right? I don't hide. Uh, but also don't come on here and make up bullshit ass stories, right? And so... Real ones, quote unquote, don't do that, right? Again, talk about what you want in your music, but we're not talking about music. We're talking about podcasts. We're talking about interviews, right? Where you're instigating, you're poking. And so what happens when Gold Toast goes to Southern California and he does the video with Jenny 6 9 She's not a Southsider. She's not a Sureña. She's <laughs> like, come on, homes, right? She's not the homegirl necessarily. She's, she's from down there. But by everybody's admission, she ain't never been in the mix, right? She's an artist. So she gets an opportunity. She gets put on. Haters world goes crazy, goes bananas, all this 
take over this, 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 that. And it causes a lot more eyes and it causes a lot more division. And it causes people in different parts of California to start feeling some type of way. And, and that kind of brings me to my other point of what's the motive here? What's the incentive, right? Because the, the air that was around when Gold Toes and Cholo were sitting down and Gold Toes was pushing El Chicano with, with Mr. Little One and, and doing different stuff. Um, and I'm not saying Gold Toes has the answer for everything, right? Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, shit, at the time, though, he was telling American Cholo, hey, I'm going to take you on the road, right? Did, you can go back and look. It, it was an interview, a conversation that they had. And he's like, man, we got a plan for you. We're going to take you on the road, you know, to get you out to New York, man, to the Bronx. Get you up in the Bay Area. And American Cholo's like, yeah, man, I'm all for it. But what happened? The little chitter-chatter from these other places starts to create a public pressure where now maybe American Cholo feels like that's not the greatest move. And honestly, maybe it is not as great of a move as it would have been, you know, six months ago now because of all the stuff that's being said. So opportunities are getting closed down, right? So what's the, the agenda here? The, the motive, like, I'm not a conspiracy theory type of person. Um, I, I generally kind of dismiss those. I, I really like to operate in facts. That's that's where I'm most comfortable, right? But something ain't right here. You know what I mean? Something ain't right. Is There's a, a small move towards, again, not unity, not red and blue finals being fucking tied together, not any of that shit, right? Which, if it happens someday, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I, you know, not my business. I'm not in the mix. But, but that's not what was being pushed, right? What was being pushed is, hey, I have a company. I have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of artists that I work with. I have great relationships. I have great connections. And I know there's talented people, specifically talented raza, that comes from all over. And I'm here to help. I don't want to take your money. I don't want to burn you. I don't want to get over on you. Like, let's make this work, right? You want to be in the movies. You got a book you want to write. You got a podcast. You sing. You rap. You produce videos. You, whatever you got going on. Let's break down the doors, uh, uh, the barriers in the entertainment industry where we're not just pawns in the game, but we're real factors in the game. And we're regarded as such. And that's good news to an artist. That's good news to a creator, right? But... That starts happening, those conversations happen. Mature men like Cholo, right? And like Gold Chos from different ends of the state. But again, ain't neither one of them been run around banging in fucking decades. So they're not operating as gang members. They're operating as men, mature men, grown men, no longer fascinated with the juvenile mentality that a whole lot of us, myself included, spent way too many years deeply involved in. Right. And that gets shut down and, and, and barriers, you know, get put up and like folks don't want that to happen. And then here come the things like haters world with his little chitter chatter and lefty with this whole made up ass fucking resume pops up out of nowhere. And all of a sudden he just got out after nine years. And and what's his whole thing? I'm going to go viral by dissing the Norte. I'm going to go viral by by dissing lazy boy. He didn't fucking say nothing bad about me. I'm going to go viral doing this stuff. I'm going to steal all these lyrics from these other artists. Like, that's weird, homes. That's not how a lot of artists get their start, right? But as time is going on, you're kind of seeing, damn, you got balls. I'm the general. I'm the general. And come on, homes. You don't even tell the truth, right? Like, so, but it's that immature mindset. It's, it's those types of folks that mess stuff up for everybody. Because you can only say so much. You can only poke so much before then other people feel like, it's their place to respond, right? So now you got the little Instagram post going around. So in Lefty, wearing a money sign suede shirt, raising the question, hey, fool, didn't money sign suede get whacked? Like, damn, it's kind of odd for you to be the super active author and walking around with a shirt with a dude that got blasted by your own people on it, right? If we're just going to keep it a buck. Like, so now you see, and it's going to get more childish. And in the process of getting more childish, it could wind up getting more dangerous. And we don't need shit to be more dangerous, right? Rappers going to rap about what they rap about. Um, you don't have to... If you're a good artist, 
you don't have to create a distraction for your art to get traction. Well, it rhymes. Maybe I'm a good artist. No. Um, uh, it's Bozo. You've been doing music for a long time, a long time. So, if you still can't sell music without making up lies about your prison experience, then maybe making music is not for you, and you should stick to the construction work and that kind of stuff because you also appear to have built a good life for yourself, right? But it's come on, you're getting caught out by rats. Like it's you know, it it's all just become a charade and a show and. The problem is it's kind of being exported, right? And and opportunities are going to be lost. That's my point, right? And there are some that say, well, we don't want those opportunities because we can do it on our own. Okay, cool. Well, you've been doing it on your own for all this time and where you at right now? Come on, man. You ain't blown up yet. So maybe it's why it's not saying that, that, that folks can't do it, but it hasn't happened so far. So why not? Oh, no, because I got to cut it the fuck out. Just stop. Like, adults need to be okay with being fucking adults and stop trying to be teenagers. You know what I mean? Like, be an artist and, and appeal to the younger crowd or whatever, but there's a whole lot of older folks like me, you know, that, that still love rap music, that grew up on rap music. I would love to bump rap music. There's just not a whole lot of rappers that I care to listen to. And even some of the ones that I do like their lyrics... Then I hear him talk on a podcast or something, and I'm like, man, I'm cool. I'm good. It's, I don't know, man, I wonder if there's another agenda at play somewhere, right? If, if, if somewhere up above, there's some people moving the pieces around to keep this division. And again, I'm not standing here calling for unity. Don't get me wrong. I'm not calling for division either. Uh, it, what's going to happen in prison is going to happen in prison, and what happens in the streets happens in the streets. And those in that mix got to figure that out. Uh, but... For business opportunities, for business people, not gangsters. Gangsters gonna do gang shit. Um, gangsters don't make great businessmen. Like you gotta kind of let go of some of the gang shit before you can really become a legit business person. You you can't have one foot in, one foot out, right? Uh, it it doesn't last very long. So, for those who want to be artists, for the young kid growing up, who's like, man, fuck, I got bars, but I don't claim nothing. I don't bang shit. Like I'm I'm from. This city, I'm from that town, but but I, I'm not into that. Like I, I play basketball and I go to you know youth group at church, whatever. But I don't want to be a Christian rapper because you know, it. How do I get on? How do I get to do this? Then all of a sudden, oh, you gotta, you can't work with him. You go and work with him. Why do you think there's so many of these artists wind up telling on everybody? I think part of the reason is. Because they feel like they got to be gangsters to get into the industry. And then they get some money and they pay to have gangsters around them. Then they wind up getting caught up in some gang shit and they ain't going to do that kind of time. So they flip, they fold, they rat, they tell people, right? It's when some of these folks, if you just give them a lane that doesn't require them to pretend to be like something that they're not, maybe they can succeed and create a new wave, create new attention, create new lanes of like, bro, I'm just good at what I do. I'm a good singer. I'm a good artist. I produce good videos. I have a good podcast. Like, um, whatever the case may be. And just grow that way. And and again, I'm not some fucking walking commercial for Goto's. Don't get me wrong. But it's him and people like him. And people like how Jolo seemed he was going to be. And I don't know. Maybe he's changed. Maybe he hasn't. But that can actually make that happen. But But again, then the noise comes in. And folks fold to the pressure. Nah, bro, it ain't a good look. It ain't a good look. And it has real consequences, right? Because I will also say this, and, and then I'm going to close. When Northside Soldier came out in prison, if you think that there was not Northerners on the yard listening to that tape in their cell, then coming out, and having a chip on their shoulder when they looked across the yard at the Southsiders, you're mistaken. And I'm sure the South had their own same stuff too. I'm not saying that, like, I, my experience, right? I, that's what was being listened to in the cell I was in, you know? So, uh, I don't know what, what guys over there listen to, but I, I'm sure it goes both ways. Uh, the, the point is, the music, the language, these podcasts, everybody has cell phones now. Yes, you have individuals coexisting on these yards at the upper levels. But ones and fucking twos or whatever, right? Like it's 
doing time is doing time to some extent, but come on, man. That shit ain't no... I don't know. Uh, let me not go there. So I'm not trying to brag about being in prison either or brag about being at higher levels because there ain't nothing to be proud of. I really wish I would have just stayed out of prison my whole fucking life. Uh, and, and that's why I've done what I what I can to live my life in such a way to not go back since I paroled in December of 2005. And I'm proud of that and I stand on that. But the point is this. You got these dudes sitting in their cells. And yes, we're coexisting, right? Yes, North and South, should say, is, is coexisting in prison. And there was some coexisting before too, right? Just, just to be clear, the end of hostilities did not start the era of having Northerners and Southsiders on the same yard and not going to war. Um, it's, when I was in Salinas Valley, A yard, level four, right? GP yard at that time. Um, there was 200 Southsiders on the yard. At times there was eight, 12, 15 Northerners. It was all love. It was all respect, right? It, it's, Southsiders got me a job in the kitchen. I didn't have big old knives that fucking Bozo had, whatever kitchen he worked in. But, you know, um, they, they got me that job because one of them knew me from another prison. And it was just mutual respect, right? The point being, we didn't go to war with each other, right? Because we didn't have a reason to. If we're blasting, you know, we're cleaning up our own house, right? Whacking people on a regular basis. They were doing the same thing. So coexisting has always happened. Um, it's just it can pop off at any time. And now it's less likely to pop off because you got older folks out there that talk. But it's a separate topic for another day. But I say all that to say, despite having these older folks there and, and, and whatnot and, and negotiating and talking and a cozier relationship, which is a foreign concept to me in prison, uh, coexisting is not the coziness of the relationship is. But I'm not in prison. It's not my fucking business. They can do what they want. Uh, but but you got youngsters in there, too. You got a lot of young men in prison. And, you know, they're they're with the activities, right? And from both sides. I'm not saying more on one side or the other. But you got to do, you sit in the cell there and you watch it. I'm just F these dudes, F those dudes, F these dudes, F those dudes. And all the likes are coming up and all the comments. Yeah, and these fools are this and those fools are that. And then here come these fools. You think that doesn't impact how people feel when they go out to the yard? And then they see somebody from the other side and... Maybe the day before, they would have kind of given it the benefit of the doubt and let it go. But now they see something that makes them feel some type of way. Oh, fool, is, that, is that fool on the same type of time as this dude on the podcast? Is that fool on the same type of time as that fool on Instagram? You know? And I don't know, man. It's There's consequences to this shit. And this social media stuff, to some degree, is forever. Right? And so I would just encourage people, tone it down. Make your rap, talk about shit, we kill ops, fuck bitches, and all the other stuff, whatever, right? It, it's, it, do your thing, right? And, and obviously nobody has to listen to me, I speak for myself, you know? Um, but but just kind of a suggestion, what I would like to see, for whatever the fuck that's worth, and I know I'm not the only one, though. Toning down this podcast shit back and forth, and these thoughts back and forth, right? And instead, just do your music, and, and go from there, because... There seems to be an agenda at play, and I don't think it's heading in a good direction. Anyways, help others move in excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. Help your community because they need you. And uh, yeah, man, tap in.